matters writing some code. So um, I did a few of these before, a couple of these actually. Um, actually, no, I, I take that back. I did one of these before, and it got split into two separate streams because I needed to take a break in the middle. And um, I want to apologize because the video quality was abysmal. It was really, really bad. Uh, I think it was coming through at like 480p or something terrible like that. So um, I've gotten a capture card and I'm streaming from my other PC. So I think I've gotten pretty good quality on the stream here. And so I wanted to do a little recap of what I did last time. Um, and I know that there was probably no viewers last time, so no big deal. Uh, this will just be a good review of, of what I've been working on in this project. So this project is a integration between Django and Svelte. Uh, for the uninitiated, uh, Django is a is a Django project. Django is a Python um, web framework, and it is great. However, it has some shortcomings on front end user experience. What's possible there is pretty minimal uh, as far as reactive stuff goes and it definitely isn't streamlined in any way. Enter Svelte as a JavaScript, a compiled JavaScript front-end framework, um, a component framework that is really excellent and um, easy to work with and um, it, like I said, it's compiled. It produces a very small JavaScript bundle. It has good um, CSS uh, uh, sort of scoping to keep um, all the CSS contained in its own components. Um, and I think it's great. So I sought to integrate Django and Svelte <coughs> so that um, it's easier to have a Svelte front end on your Django site without uh, having to dramatically change your uh, authentication stories or your delivery model or anything like that. So the long and short of it is that the Django Svelte package here, uh, which has freaking four stars now, yeah, I'm like a major open source developer at this point with four freaking stars, words getting out. Um, yeah, so basically what it what Django Svelte does is just sort of grease the works a little bit to bring a Svelte component into a Django template um, and provides some uh, uh, provides a Svelte template to uh, to to play nicely in that ecosystem. And then finally, it comes with a demo package here, which is what I'm actually working on in these sessions. So the, the demo package is just here to illustrate uh, what is possible with this integration and to uh, give you some guidelines and some, some uh, um, starting points for incorporating this package into your own project. So last time I was working on getting a, what was I working on? Yeah, I have it here. I was working on getting a uh, a new Svelte component. So there was already the, the default one that was in the project, um, and now there is this uh, this newer component that requires authentication to use. So if you're authenticated and you click the button, everything's good. And if you're not authenticated, it says you're not so good. Um, so just having that second component there uh, required some work. First off, in roll up. Oh, I have the wrong roll up, don't I? Mm, yes, that's the wrong roll up. I should be using the roll. I should be looking at the roll up from Django Svelte demo. Yeah, so let's start with the right file here. Um, so I added this line down here to tell um, the Svelte install to compile another component. And then I added some boilerplate here to express that component and say how it should behave. And all this is just copied from a template. 
And then from there, I moved on to working on the component itself, which was a fairly simple component, just a few, just a few lines here. Um, but to do the API transactions, I went ahead and um, worked out this API.js, which um, provides access to all of the, the HTTP methods and um, you know does all the behavior here. It's pretty simple behavior. There's nothing uh, important going on in there, um, but it just needed to exist so that the auth component could do API stuff. Um, finally, I or uh, moving along the line here, I is this the right file? Mm, I don't think this is the right file. Django swap demo. Oh yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, so I added a couple endpoints here. One's public, one requires auth. And so to support these two URLs, I made some views, uh, just a simple class that returns uh, an easy response whenever you're authenticated for this class and all the time for the other class. And then we started the thing up and showed it running. So let's pick up there, CD projects. demo and I think I can just do make run here cool so with that running uh, we should be able to do uh, localhost 8000 and yeah here's the default component from from Svelte and then here's the sort of uh, kludgy little new component that I made um, whenever I click check off, nothing happens because I'm not off into the site. Uh, but if I open up a new tab here and go to admin, I should be able to log in. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Well, let's. Let's fix that. Um, let me take a look at my make file here and see what we have. Okay, I have make shell. Oh my, that Bibby downstairs is singing along with his show. He's got a nice voice. I don't know if you can hear him on the microphone. Um, oh hey, hi viewer. Welcome, welcome to the party. So, um, do to do, do made me all nervous having a viewer here. Uh, okay, so I'm doing make shell and I want to make sure that I have a super user. So let's do dot slash manage create super user use the user. Call. This doesn't matter, which is different from my uh, the name I would use. This matters. Cool, so I created that super user. Everything should be good over here now if I just get a new tab and do local, oh, that's not a new tab, that's a new window. Admin, it gives me this, poll, pass, and I'm logged in. So now if I come over here, I'm off. Cool, so it works just like it did at the end of the last session, um, or the last stream. Cool. Um, so that brings us to today. Um, today I want to try to use a post endpoint and to send data to the uh, um, back end from a Svelte component. So doing that here in our auth component uh, should be fine, but I want to go ahead and just go through the exercise again and make a new, a whole new component. So part of the idea behind a JS framework is that you, you ought to be able to make a, 
a so-called single page app where you have like one big component that has a bunch of small components inside of it and um, they come together to make this this larger whole and it manifests as like one component that you can paint on a single HTML page. Um, the model that I'm advocating in in this uh, demo, the model that I'm that I'm trotting out in this demo, is to have many small components that populate otherwise normal, um, otherwise sort of basic Django uh, um, templates. Right, um, so you're not going to have a single page app necessarily. You'll still have your many page thing going on, but each page may have one or more components on it that provide uh, reactive um, behavior for the users. So the notion is there that you can kind of checkerboard strategy your way toward having a single page app if you are currently running a non single page app. Right, so you might start by making a component that enhances behavior of one little part, make another component that, that enhances behavior of another part, and eventually, as you get those components built up, you can sort of uh, um, um, Voltron them together into uh, a single page app, and then fully transition toward a, a different front end, um, at which point it might make sense to revisit your deployment model. Um, but if you're just wanting to put one reactive thing on a page, there's no point in revisiting your deployment model or your authentication story or anything like that. And uh, so just bopping a, a single component on the, a single simple small component on the page uh, is what I'm going for here. So I'm gonna make this called post component because that's gonna be what it is. It's posting something. Uh, I wanna copy this, so I'm just gonna save it as, um, and I'm gonna follow the same pattern post component. Now that that's changed, I'll fix up all of the instances of capital auth and change those to post. And I'll fix all the lowercase ones. The uh, a few of these that I changed don't actually matter. Uh, this one and this one matter a lot, as does this one. Those three things are really all you need to change. Oh, well, I guess I take that back. Uh, actually, no, this this is literally uh, the only of the capital ones that has to change. And this and this are the lowercase ones that have to change. Everything else is, is fine. Uh, but since I did change the variable name post component, I should change it, the export line as well. Okay, so that's all changed up. Um, then I, so now if we look at the file tree, uh, okay, we look at the file tree here uh, for Django Svelte demo, we should see, um, yeah, main post component there. It's, uh, it's uh, in the source directory um, while rollup.config js is is outside of that source directory okay so now we can um, so now we can um, start working on the component proper and uh, actually so now we can save this so we don't lose those changes so let's make a new file here and we will save this as post component that's felt and in this we can do a script tag um, I have a style tag I don't think we're gonna actually put one in because I don't really care how this looks I just want to show the functionality of the component um, so let's uh, let's have a bit of a bit of data here let's do an input uh, we'll say this is text. The name can be. Uh, um, well, who even cares what the name is? This is just some fake input. Um, and that should suffice. 
we might have to tweak that. I'm, I'm not an HTML uh, wizard here. So we'll get to that in a minute. And I'm going to definitely need a button. Um, so on a click, we can do, uh, well, um, let's, let's get it right if I'm going to do it. Um, we could do post. Actually, let's let's just do uh, let's just do this simply. Let's do handle click. So up here we'll make a function function handle click. It's going to take an argument. It doesn't actually need the argument, so we'll leave that alone. Uh, I want to make this async because I'm going to be doing a post. So we'll say. Um, let response equal uh, await post, and I want to send something somewhere. I don't quite have an endpoint for that yet, but I could think of one. Auth component, we were using API v1 requires auth, so this is a decent starting point. Let's take that and um, I didn't specify any behavior for post with requires auth. So conceivably, we could um, just specify what post does there, and that will be good enough. Um, actually, let's, let's have a look at what that's supposed to do. API v1 docs. Yeah, all we have is a get so it ought not be that difficult to put a post on there, and I can. Uh, we can do that both with auth and without, and see what happens. Um, okay. So instead of requires, uh, yeah, I'll just leave it as requires auth, and then for data, we will say um, that our input here is equal to. Um, Uh, our fake input value and then let's um, define a fake input variable so let fake input and I'll initialize that to a blank string and then let's bind it here so we'll say bind oh god Simon Baker this glorious cat of mine, Simon Baker, just came and sat on my keyboard, and that's cool. Appreciate you. Luckily, it's a split keyboard, so he can sit in the middle. He can sit in the middle and get some pets. Oh, he attack. Oh, he likes to attack. Yes, he bites. He has a fearsome bite. Oh, oh, but the viewers aren't here for Simon Baker. I'm here for Simon Baker. The viewers aren't here for Simon Baker. So let's bind. Um, uh, with value equals fake input, and I think that's going to work for us. Um, should work for us. It's almost going to work for us. We still need to have the post. That might be good enough to, to let us try it out. So uh, that settles what we need to do for the component end of things, at least for now. The next thing to think about is the Django template. So I'm going to pop back over to my first column and open up the HTML. So template HTML. Yeah, here we go. Um, wait, what is this? Oh, no, that's not what we want at all. Uh, HT, blah, 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 blah. Mm, yeah, perfect. That's where we're trying to be. So we can basically follow the same thing that we did last time and just, just put another display svelte tag in there. Now, again, display svelte. 
this uh, the cu custom template tag comes from the Django Svelte package. And so at the top, we have to load Django Svelte so that the template tag is available. And then here, it's um, a limitation of the package that you cannot use the same component twice on a page. It will freak its geek out because it's using on on the uh, where where to go on the uh, um, no on the template itself. If we inspect it here, we can. Um, yeah, we should be able to see the yeah the div here app target is uh, using the ID app target so um, and this is being sort of inserted automatically so if there were a, a second a second reference and here we see auth component target if there were a second usage of auth component then we would have another div with the same ID and it would be bad for a for you know having a good web page so um, So yeah, it's just a, a limitation right now. There's some possibility of lifting that limitation in the future with some work. Um, but for now, yeah, if you use a component on a page, you can only use it one time. Uh, so then, and we should be able, able post data as well. And then let's actually this template is not quite done yet. Post it. Uh, this is not inf infringing on the trademark post it. I'm referring to the uh, HTTP verb post, um, which I don't think can be trademarked. Um, actually, I could be wrong on that. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, give me one second here. I'm uh, I'm have to do a little chat thing. Um, okay, so we've made our component, we've put it on our page. Let's see if it renders the way we think it ought to, the way I think it ought to. Uh, so we see, and we should be able to post data as well. Cool, that's great. Where's my element? Where's my component? Um, it ain't there. So why is that? Well, let's turn to the logs and see. Um, so yeah, one more second. I gotta, gotta do another chatty thing. Um, yeah, so what I want to look at here are the logs. Oh, there's no target for logs. Let's fix that. Uh, oh, there is node logs. Bingo. Um, so nothing's happening over here, which is fairly expected, I think. Let's go to auth component. Let me hit save on this, and then we'll see what happens. Yeah, it causes a build whenever I hit save on auth component because auth component is being monitored. Um, right now, the post component is not being monitored because we just added it to rollup, and rollup isn't monitored. Ro the rollup config, right? So it doesn't it doesn't auto reload that. So what we need to do is make stop, bring the container down, and make run, 
and and then when that comes back up, uh, we'll we'll take another look. Okay, so it started back up. Let's have a look at the logs and let's see. Okay, so nothing special has happened in the logs. Again, that's totally expected. Um, but still nothing shows up here. So, why? Let's hit save on that. And okay, so it, it built it. That's cool. And hmm, let's see what is going on, if anything. Body, you should be able to post data as well. Div, okay, so I have the post component target. have static post component .js, which seems to be there. Ah, it doesn't like it because, whoa. It doesn't like it because I misspelled something. So let's look at main post component .js and figure it out. Yeah, I fat fingered it hoard right here and put an extra K in there somehow. So that hopefully fixes the issue and we can see that here. Yeah, we have our post. Uh, nothing happens when I click post it because there's nothing going on in that. There's nothing going on in that. Uh, oh, something did happen. I take it back. It happened seven times because I clicked that thing seven times. Server responded with status of 403 forbidden. And that's because we don't actually have a post endpoint there um, yeah so nothing nothing's going down on that because it doesn't like it um, <clears throat> so then where do we go next next up I think we should wire up the view to take in uh, post data. Let us. Oh, um, yeah. To get the post functionality, I ought to be able to just define a post function here. Self request args quar. So I'm not expecting any keyword arguments, but I should be getting some re request data. So let's do a print request dot data. Um, and then I'm going to return the same response if everything is, is cool. I also want to go ahead and print request dot user just so we can be sure that everything is coming through the way we expect it to be coming through. OK, so post is set up. It should be there in both public and the, the auth um, API endpoints now. We can confirm that if we bop open a new tab and go to the API endpoint uh, documentation. Cool, so on here we see both a post, doesn't take any parameters because we haven't defined a serializer or done any fun stuff like that. But if we execute it, we should see, yeah, everything's good. Um, it won't have printed any, and if we do app logs here, it won't have printed any uh, um, uh, well, why didn't it print any stuff there? It seems like it ought to have. Hmm. 
Hmm. I have print. At the very least, it should have given me a blank line. Right? Have I gone insane? Print, yes. And then I hit go, and it should. Okay, there we go. I haven't gone insane. Or have I? Oh, no, 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 no. I see what it is. Okay, between the time that I hit save and make it over to here and hit run, the development server has not reloaded. I think that's possibly what's going on. If I hit execute again, it should. Uh, it didn't say yes. Why didn't it say yes? OK, now we're getting it. Man, this is weird behavior. OK, there's still a bit of lag. No sweat. No sweat. Uh, let's, uh, OK, then let's go ahead and now that we have the endpoint here, I should be able to do some testing here. And I still get forbidden. Now, let me refresh. I want to get a clean uh, console. Still get forbidden. So why does it not like that? It likes it fine whenever I do it from the um, whenever I do it from here on the API documentation. Um, the 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 difference is this. Uh, that CSRF token is being sent automatically by the by by this swagger um, uh, little page that's being sent as a header um, while that is not um, that is not happening over here right there's no no special headers being sent out with this request um, except content type if there's data. So in this case, we are sending out some headers, but they're not useful headers. So let's see what Django has to say about itself for this. CSRF. Uh, 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 yeah, Django already has some CSRF stuff built in. It uses it all the time for forms. So there's absolutely no reason that we can't make this happen for our requests as well, right? They're using this, this business here to get a cookie value, getting a CSRF token. Um, so we're gonna do the same damn thing. Up here, I'm going to put this in API. Um, I don't need that line. I'm gonna deal with the CSRF token on my own. I want, I do want to get the cookie that has the CSRF value that'll be useful for us, um, and I want to include it in the headers. And I can basically, like, I, it's, they're showing me what what it should be here, right? I should be making a header like that. So I'm just gonna, it's gonna do it. I'm just gonna opt headers, and I'm gonna make. Again, make this here thing into a CSRF X CSRF token, and instead of doing whatever this business is down here, I'm just going to grab that and put it in place. So now, if I um, actually before I send this thing in, I'm going to console.log a few things, um, opts. I wanted 
do URL as well. And that should give us some insights into what exactly is going on here. Um, all right, so we're seeing method post. We have the body, that's our data. We have the headers, which include now a CSRF token. And we didn't get any complaint about the um, post that we did. Let's check our logs and let's see if it liked it. Uh, we did post to that endpoint. It did complete. It didn't print anything, which is confounding. Should have printed these things. But here we are. Um, I'm going to do another key here, did post. that should give us something more definitive and then back over in our component I want to give some indication of what happened here so um, let's make a new let's make a new thing if that's what they're called things let's make a new uh, uh, um, structure up here for svelte um, if Let's do if res, then um, res. Yeah, we'll just print the whole damn thing out. Um, let's make res a bit more accessible. And I'm going to just leave it as uh, null for starters here. And. Give that a second, and we will. Oh, beautiful! It, I'm, I'm a dingus. Um, for it to be interpreted correctly, it needs to be in brackets. That's just a basic felt thing. Um, we give that a second to rebuild, and we'll see if we waited long enough. It made an object object. Cool. That's what I wanted to see is an object object. Um, let's do better here and let's do uh, res.scud and res. Let's, let's actually oof, um, uh, we'll say then uh, scud else spad and then did post did post didn't post frowny face and we'll give that a second to reload Here we go. Ah, it's good. And did post. I'm a happy camper. Um, so the trick there was that the CSRF token it needs to be present for any post, for any sort of, uh, you know, anything sending data. And we want to make sure that it's data from someone that we trust, uh, from a, a browser session that we trust and not coming from some other place. So. Yeah, uh, pretty quick fix. I'm going to fix the indentation here a little bit. And we're going to call that good. So we're posting. Big deal. Um, I was going to save this for a future session, but we've only been going now for about 40 minutes. So I think I can go a little bit longer and not have it be a big deal.
Um, the next thing I wanted to get into was to think about how to set up your CI pipeline to support this thing. Um, so right net to support Django Svelte, that is. So right now, we are we only have it set up for a for a local uh, a local uh, um, dev environment, and that's all being facilitated through the Docker Compose. Um, using Docker Compose here, I'm or within the Docker Compose, I'm propagating the content from the Node container into the Django app container so that it's accessible for the static files finder to find it. And I'm putting it in that specific place. Um, and in the dev setup, the node container is running all the time alongside the um, alongside the app container. One moment, I'm going to take a sip of water. So as I was saying, the in the dev setup, in the dev environment, the node container runs alongside the app container. However, part of the idea behind Django Svelte was to not need to change your deployment environment. So your staging environment and your production environment. I don't I don't want, I don't think it's necessary in any way to have a node container running in those in those sort of more production environments. Um, because the bundle has already been compiled, right? You, you can compile the bundle. It doesn't change at all. It doesn't need to change at all. You can insert context into it as needed to customize it for your, for the particular user that's seeing the component, um, and, and for the particular instance, but you shouldn't need a node container running to do that, right? You do need it because you know, I, I do need it on the, the development environment because I'm modifying the felt files and I want them to be rebuilt so that I don't have to you know wait very long to uh, have the have the uh, um, the component uh, there rendered on the page so um, the the idea then is for your CI pipeline to deal with building the the bundles from node and inject them into your um, your app image. So I think I've already set some of this up in the Docker file. Indeed, here in the Docker file, I am uh, installing the OS requirements, installing the Python dependencies and then installing the app itself finally I'm copying the built components from from the Svelte directory however in general if you're encountering this docker file those don't exist um, I think if you go to the repo you go into spelled. Okay, there is a public. There's no build though. There's no build directory. So this doesn't even. This isn't even an option. In like this will this will throw an, an error if you're trying to build this in like a CI pipeline, um, because the build directory just doesn't. It, you can't copy it into the container. You can't copy it into the image rather. It's, it doesn't, doesn't freaking exist. So no problem. Um, that's why that I mean that's that's what your CI pipeline is there to do though right it's there to make sure that all of the dependencies are, are met automatically so what we need to do is just compensate for this in our CI pipeline a little bit and uh, let let it do the work right so um, essentially this is this this docker file is laying out the the foundation of that to exist 
before you build this Docker file. So, um, so I'm going to focus on uh, this first bullet point first. If you're um, if you're deploying to some kind of a Docker host, or if you're using um, if you're using uh, an orchestrator to orchestrate containers, then um, then this first this first approach is probably going to be the right one for you, the one that I'm going to do right now. If you have more bare metal hosting where you are, um, where you're you're sort of manually configuring, or maybe not manually, but you're configuring a uh, a, a dedicated host for your app, then uh, you know, like I have a really cheap web host for uh, TutorPaul.com. And uh, it doesn't have Docker at all on there, so I have to like install G Unicorn and do all that stuff manually. Um, it's uh, it's not great. I don't love it, but it's cheap. And since that's a donation-based site, it works. Um, I still want to be able to use Django Svelte there, so eventually I'm going to come through and. Uh, and provide a template for for dealing with this sort of bare metal hosting. Um, for now, I'm going to focus on what would be appropriate for a more um, uh, a more robust service. So I've already hinted at a lot of this. I need to. Collect my thoughts a little bit though before I can move forward and see where we are already. Okay, so I don't have any CI stuff in place. Um, the bulk of CI that I do is on GitLab, so that's going to be the the, the 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 template that I stick with here. Is setting this thing up to run on GitLab. Um, the project itself, of course, is hosted on GitHub. GitHub has a different style of built-in CI that I don't have as much familiarity with. Um, so possibly over time, I will build out some a, a CI example for GitHub CI. But for now, I'm doing GitLab. So let's do, let's do the needful. I'm going to drop in a new file here, and I'm going to call it .gitlab hyphen ci dot yaml uh, and I just wanna I just wanna have a reference over here um, GitLab has pretty good documentation somewhere in here yeah they have hella documentation on their GitLab ci dot yaml file and it outlines a lot of what you can do. Um, it helps to have a little bit of experience with it to know uh, what's useful to do. And if I'm totally honest, I basically learned how to do this once, and then I reference an old version of a GitLab CI file and work from there. So let's get to the sort of global things that we need to deal with. Um, we can define some, we can define like an image that's the default for everything. Um, we could define some services that happen, basically any, you know, anything that happens in a normal job. Um, the main thing that we need, the first thing that I always think that we need is these stages to define what actually is happening in your build, like what the, the broad steps are. So stages, uh, the stages I want to work on here are going to be build and publish. Uh, let's uh, uh, publish, register. So I'm, I'm going to, if I was doing a real production-y thing, I would have test here as well something to um, verify that the code is in good working order. Whether or not test comes before or after build is debatable, right? It could be cool to build your container and then run the tests 
against the container, and that's a, probably more realistic. However, if you're doing unit tests, then you can test, you can do the testing prior to building and make sure that all of your all of your units work, um, and not uh, not bother with building until you've verified that. So, uh, this isn't a this isn't a, a treatise on how to organize your CI pipeline, um, but uh, it is uh, uh, you know I'm I'm here to give my opinion on things so so deal with it. Sorry for that hostility there. Anyway, um, then after we've defined the stages, we can start defining the jobs proper. So I want to do. I know that there's there's two builds that I need to deal with. I need to build uh, front end, or let's do build svelte. And there's gonna. That's definitely a part of stage. Stage. St stage. A build. Actually, I'm going to put a test in there. Let's do it. Uh, test. Um, in here, I'm going to do testing on uh, code quality. Ah, you know what? It's not. I'm not. I'm not even going to do it. I don't care. You have your own things that you need to do for your own code quality. This isn't a, a, a guide for that. I'm not going to be opinionated on that. Um, so for the build stage here, there's two phases to it. I need to build Svelte, and then I need to build the app. And I want them to be built in that order. In that order. Um, and not in some different order. So um, the way that we can accomplish that is by specifying, um, by specifying the uh, um, dependencies. Uh, one second here. Yeah, we can specify the dependencies of a um, uh, of a of a job, and those depend. Actually, let's review the documentation on those dependencies. Um, they are called. It's actually just dependencies. Where is it at? Dependencies. Dependencies. There you go. By default, all artifacts from previous stages are passed to each job. However, you can use the dependencies keyword to define a limited list of jobs to fetch artifacts from. Okay. Um, dependencies in the context of a job. Pass a list of all previous jobs. Define jobs from stages that were executed. Okay, um, so I need to change things up a little bit because of this sentence here. Before the current one, so I, I it won't work to just have a build where I'm building both the app and Svelte, right? I need to have a stage prior to build. So I could call this pre-build if I wanted. And so in fact, I need to do the svelte build in pre-build phase. And then here in dependencies, dependencies, I would specify the build svelte job as a dependency here. I'm going to have my own stuff to do on this. Uh, for now, I'm just kind of getting the precursors set up. Um, so let's think about how that dependency plays. It says here, by default, all artifacts from previous stages are passed. However, you can use the dependencies to define a limited list. So I'm, I'm specifying that I only want dependencies from build spell. What, what artifacts do I actually want from that? Um, artifacts are another directive that can be put in a job. Here, I want to be sure. Did I spell it right, first of all? Artifacts, good. Um, here I want to specify the build directory of that, of, of, of the Svelte folder. Um, 
so how do I how do I do that? Well, they give you the paths, um, the paths directive, which allows you to specify arbitrary paths relative to your project directory. So paths, and I only need that one directory. Svelte public. Build. So putting that should tell GitLab to keep an eye on those assets that get created from that build process. And dependencies down here in the build app phase, in the build app job rather, will pull in those artifacts into the working directory of, or into the project directory of the, um, of the subsequent jobs. Uh, in fact, I could omit this. I could omit this, and it would still work the same way, because the dependencies are loaded up by default. Um, but this is a little bit more. Um, this is a little bit more expressive. It's, it's saying that I actually want this dependency here, and, and it's just not, not not just something that's coming along for the ride. Okay, so let's get to the nuts and bolts of how to build this felt container. Um, so we already have a rough sketch of that. If we look at the Docker compose file, we know, <clears throat> we know the image that we want to use for that. Excuse me. We know the image that we want to use for that. So I'll grab that and bring it over and put it at the right depth. Um, and then we, we should know basically what we want to do to run this thing, to get, to get it to actually run. We, want to, we need a script. Since it's a node container, it already has node installed and all that stuff. Um, but we do need to get into the correct directory. So CD felt and we do need to install the dependencies install those should already be uh, enumerated in the package.json file and then uh, from there I think we just build npm run build and we could verify over here in the I think it's in roll up uh, maybe it's not in roll up where would it be it would be in it should be in roll up what where are we into oh yeah here it is in package.json we have build which should do roll up C Perfect. I think that ought to do the trick for us. So this is going to do the building. Everything will look great and obviously work correctly. And then we do the once we have that done, we can do the, the build of the app proper. And this is where this is the only the only thing that outputs a container. So I'm going to use some boilerplate from over here. Um, in order to build this thing, I'm going to use a image dedicated to building other images. So this Kaneko. And again, just sort of copying some boilerplate over. I want to run this script. I'll modify it as needed. Um, in order to, and this is a weird bit of boilerplate, in order to send, in order to be able to send your image to the registry, to the GitLab registry, you have to configure your Docker to be authenticated, to, to configure the Docker that's in this image to be authenticated into that registry. So that line basically never needs to change. And then I'm running the executor. 
I have some context in uh, as context I'm giving it all of the project directory zip built in all, all of these are built in uh, GitLab environment variables for your builds and this is part of why I love GitLab because it is tremendous um, for destination this will automatically push your image up to the uh, um, up to the registry so I'm not even gonna bother with anything special here in most cases I would uh, want to take the built image and subject it to some more tests and possibly rename it retag it um, in this case for this simple example I'm not gonna worry about all of that I'm just gonna let it be built and since it's uploading already to the registry from that line and it means I don't actually need a register stage either I just need to build the svelte I need to build the um, uh, what, what, what are we gonna call this thing here I need to build the uh, the app itself and then it's done pretty easy I just realized that I don't have this project set up on GitLab at all whatsoever so let's do that let's go to GitLab GitLab these are all my things don't don't look at them don't look at them I said don't look at them uh, I want to make a new project for this in GitLab don't look at them new project here create link project Run CI CD for external repository. You got it. Uh, connect repositories from URL. Pooh, I don't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to do this on another screen so that you guys don't see my public access or my personal access token because it is not a public access token. So you guys can sit and wait for a minute while I get that from GitLab. Or I'm sorry, GitHub. Uh, I I can show part of this, right? I can show GitHub.com. I can log in. I can. Um, I can figure out how to do this. I should be able to get that from profile. Actually, you know what? There's private stuff on this. I'm gonna go ahead and be safe and not. not do that on this screen github.com let's do it over here though do, do, do. it's not under profile figure that out is it under oh let, let's see what this link has to say about the matter settings tokens um, okay nothing showing here no worries. Good on you, GitLab. Way to give me a, a link directly to the thing I want. Um, I will recreate this over here. Settings, token, tokens. And then I will generate a personal access token. I will use my security key and I will touch it. Come on, I'm touching it. There we go. Um, it's going to tell me what scopes I need. You'll need to select the repo scope. What is this token for? This is for GitLab CI. And generate token. Copy. And nice try, FBI. I'm not going to paste it in over there. I'm pasting it in on this other window. And I am hitting authenticate. And then. Wow, there's a lot of apps that I'm part of. Damn, a lot of, a lot of stuff. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm connecting up Django Svelte demo. And then uh, 
What happens if I refresh this page? Does it? Does it play nice? Well, let's not find out. Let's go back to project. I said go back to projects. Cool. There it is. Mirrored from there. No problem. It has. Oh. Oh, I haven't pushed it yet. There we go. That'll do it. So it doesn't have a set. Of, it doesn't have a CI CD that it recognizes because that GitLab CI file, that GitLab CI.yaml rather, did not exist. So let's get out of that and let's uh, do some git foo here, git status. And we added some stuff, we changed some stuff. Let's do a git uh, diff and let's see what we changed. Added some stuff to post. Uh, added a bit to the template, added a bit to roll up, deleted an empty line from auth config, cool, uh, or auth component rather, and no new line at the end of file, no problem. Added to api.js, just what we expected, and that's all for our changes. So get status again. I'm going to get add. The only one it didn't add for us was the dot file dot gitlab ci because it, it doesn't doesn't want to see that. But if we git add that explicitly, then it will not complain. Okay, so git commit and this is gonna be our stream number two. That <laughs> stream number two sounds like diarrhea. Um, <coughs> Uh, 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 adding post functionality. Uh, CI pipeline. Okay, git push. It's going to push it up to GitHub, which is going to forward it to GitLab, which is going to. is going to maybe take a minute. What do I have to do to trigger that to happen? Let's be general here. Nothing. Integral. Oh, this tab never is useful. I'm sure it's I'm well I guess I'm not sure it's not webhooks. No, it's not webhooks. Mm -hmm. I think it might be that. Four minutes ago. Update now. I'll update. Did that, why did that not update? It should update. Oh, come on, Scoob. Why don't you want to update? Okay, well, we'll just sit and wait for a while. That's fine. Let's talk about, let's talk about this and that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go over to, oh, it's already on my first tab here.
should have got a push hmm. some time ago, huh? Why why didn't you push? Oh, damn it. Okay. Uh get status. It's because I'm a dingus. Um, right, I wrote git commit and then I put a message after, but I didn't use the tack m to do a message, so it didn't actually make a commit. So now when I push, it actually pushes. Glorious. And it actually pushes 15 seconds ago. Cool. And it actually updates just now. I love it. Come on. How come there? Uh, uh, well, I'll push to you, and then you go next. Okay, I'm going to give that a minute to think about it. Maybe I'll come back down here to repository and see what we can do about it. Hmm. 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 Pull rules. No. P -p -p mirroring repositories. Try it. Okay. It says a successful update one minute ago. Why? Why? Doesn't branch it or any fun stuff like that. It still says last commit. Hmm. Authored three weeks ago. That's cool. Okay, so I'm going to assume that they're doing some sort of a job on the back end that has a queue and, you know, I'm just stuck in line waiting on that queue. No big deal. I can be patient. The streamers can be patient. The viewers. You folks at home. You one fold. Thank you for watching. I don't know who you are, anonymous viewer, but you're kind of my hero right now. If I were the Foo Fighters, I would play a song for you. But I am not the Foo Fighters. And here we wait, and we wait, and we wait. Dang, okay, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that there would be more Py more JavaScript than Python going on here. That's that's a little disappointing. I'm gonna say it. Well, I guess it, it shouldn't be too surprising. There's a lot going on with Svelte, and actually not that much going on with the Django side of things. There's surprisingly little over here to do this demo um, okay I'm gonna let that sit and think about what it's done for a while and we will we will come back to it so let's think about the differences in what we would do for a deployment like uh, like a kubernetes deployment versus a bare metal deployment so for a bare metal deployment, um, I don't have an image that I can just pull that's ready to go. I have to, um, I'm gonna have to have a way of getting those built files into place. I think fundamentally, I've got the same issue um, 
it's fundamentally the same issue as what we dealt with in the Docker file, right? By and, and the GitLab CI file um, that we need to we need to compile. I'm gonna get rid of some of these. We need to compile our. Where did the hell the Docker file go? We need to compile our um, Svelte components before we can run the app, and we need to get those Svelte components into place. So I, I'm I'm thinking here that the same exact CI solution will do the trick. Um, only I won't need this second bit. Right, I can just get away with with this. The the way that that works, the way that that that's useful, is uh, because of how artifacts work. Um, Let's read more about artifacts. Uh, artifacts are a list of files and directories created by a job once it finishes. Um, job artifacts are uploaded and downloadable as a single archive using the GitLab UI or the GitLab API. So what it does, what it's what it's going to do, is it's going to take it's going to take basically this folder right here, all the contents of it, uh, after building it in the CI step. It's going to zip it up and then have that ready for you that you can you can pull it by hitting up a, an a, a URL. Um, and I'd love to demo that. I'd absolutely love to. There we go. It's got CI CD in it now. And it passed. Look at that. Would you freaking look at that? It built. And that's beautiful. And then we get to see. Um, we get to see what it actually made for us and we see it's got the Svelte public build and in there it's got all of those components that we expect to see. So that makes me happy, happy, happy. Um, there's a CSS file here for app because the, the default uh, Svelte template includes CSS whereas my two uh, were, you know, they're they're not trying to illustrate how well CSS works in, in Svelte. They're just trying to illustrate how Django Svelte worked. So no CSS needed. And then these .map files are pretty cool. If you're not a JS developer, the map file allows for essentially decompiling the JavaScript bundle and so that you can see the Svelte code underneath and can do troubleshooting on that. Um, so the notion is that uh, on your bare metal hosting, you would uh, you know, download these artifacts archives and upload them to your bare metal hosting or download them from your bare metal host and unzip that into, into the directory where it belongs into this, whatever the equivalent is on your bare metal host to this Svelte public build and uh, after that, you would run collect static, and in that process, Django will gather up all of those, all of these uh, files from the uh, .svelte directory, rather, this svelte public build directory, and it will put them in place. So I think we get the same advantage by having this um, by having this artifact of the build process in place and I I kind of think that we're getting close to a sort of finish point on this uh, Django Svelte demo I I'm, off the top of my head I can't think of anything else that needs to be in there to make this thing really useful um, like I said before, maybe doing a uh, GitHub CI considerations because I think you can do all the same things with GitHub CI. It's just a little, they're called actions. I think it's just a little bit, uh, a little bit different on how you do it. So um, I'll do some research and figure out what that might look like and then maybe do another video covering um, covering that so 
um, I'm, I think I'm going to call this uh, a good finished stream today. And um, thank you for tuning in to any viewers. Um, and thank you for uh, thank you for starring my repo here. Being up at four stars for real, it's like uh, it, it just I'm just floating on a cloud about it. So if you if you find this thing, go ahead and star it and, and make my day. Um, as always, thanks for tuning in. I hope you found it useful, and I hope you tune in next time.